Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, Yohamad. Salam. Aleykum assalam. So today we will start a new chapter, Matrix Acidizing. Uh, as with, it was said in a uh, previous ch chapter, matrix acidizing is a uh, uh, one of the methods to remove or uh, minimize the effect of formation damage. Here are the learning objectives of this uh, chapter for uh, what you have to uh, concentrate on. I'm not going to read this uh, all out because uh, you have it on your books. So, matrix uh, acidization or matrix stimulation, because when we acidize the matrix, we uh, stimulate the reservoir to um, produce more, to uh, increase uh, permeability. So, uh, it is a uh, acidization is a um, type of stimulation. There are uh, many um, methods of uh, stimulation like uh, hydraulic fracturing, acid, uh, matrix acidization, acid wash, uh, acid fracking, uh, and uh, the matrix acidization is a um, matrix here is the uh, near well bore uh, reservoir rock matrix and uh, it is a well treatment it is not a uh, reservoir treatment although we are uh, injecting acid into the formation but uh, it is for near well bore zone uh, within the uh, meter or two meters maximum uh, area radius and uh, <clears throat> this is kind of a uh, considered as a part of well as a part of well performance uh, attributors therefore it is a well treatment and it can be uh, <clears throat> Done uh, at any stage of the um, well operations uh, after the drilling, uh, to um, example, to remove the uh, effect of uh, mud filtrate on the uh, reservoir permeability, near well bore zone permeability, and involves pumping a series of specially uh, designed. Uh, fluids with the different uh, various uh, composi chemical compositions depending on the uh, type of um, <clears throat> damage, uh, type of uh, reservoir, uh, rock or lithology uh, and uh, it is injected under fracturing pressure so the idea here is not fracture the reservoir but uh, the idea is to inject required amount of the um, uh, acid to dissolve the damage, uh, dissolve the um, solids or any uh, fluids that are damaging, uh, that are reducing the uh, permeability or relative permeability. So, and success here uh, depends on the um, what well is selected for the for the acidization because uh, of course the uh, maximum effect will be uh, from the wells that are more severely. Uh, affected by, uh, by the type damage in terms of production rate uh, but there are some uh, <coughs> factors to be taken into account like uh, 
remaining oil volumes or uh, <coughs> reserves around this well. Uh, we'll talk about that later. Choosing a correct type of the simulation treatment. So what kind of uh, injection we are going to, uh, <coughs> to uh, run uh, and a, uh, how we are going to operate these, uh, these operations, uh, perform these operations. what kind of a uh, chemicals is going to be used. And uh, another important factor is uh, injecting the treatment fluid or uh, the chemical compositions into a um, particular zone that is damaged. <coughs> uh, or to provide um, smooth or uh, uh, the required uh, amount of uh, treatment fluid into the um, appropriate zones into the um, uh, as 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 required uh, as per the uh, severity of the damage so the most damaged zones should should receive uh, more treatment fluid and less damaged zones should be uh, <clears throat> should get more uh, less uh, treatment fluid, and that is uh, achieved by some uh, di diverters. We'll talk about that later. And So, <clears throat> what is the aim of the uh, well simulation? Uh, from the well inflow equation, uh, we know that uh, production rate uh, is uh, directly depends on uh, the um, relative permeability to oil or gas, the thickness, um, drawdown, and uh, viscosity. Okay, so and skin, of course. So <coughs> this parameter, uh, uh, so for different types of uh, treatments, uh, the, these parameters are to be increased, like uh, relative permeability, uh, thickness. Well, the thickness here is meant to be uh, actual uh, contributing thickness of the reservoir into the particular well <coughs> and drawdown. As you know, draw, increasing drawdown may uh, lead to some uh, uh, the formation, additional formation damages. So the main the increasing uh, thickness is uh, also, <coughs> sorry, may require some reperforations or uh, making additional perforations. Um, so main objective <coughs> here is increase relative permeability. In other words, to uh, clean the um, pores that are blocked uh, by the chemical injection and decreasing uh, the uh, skin here we our aim is formation damage skin uh, increasing <coughs> <coughs> sorry increasing relative uh, sorry the effective wellbore diameter when we um, expand the connection with the reservoir uh, of the wellbore with the reservoir and uh, the um, changing the viscosity of the uh, produced oil fluid uh, to increase the mobility of the fluid. Uh, this is the uh, kind of chart for the um, guideline for the 
a remedy to remedy limited inflow performance where we have a uh, natural wells uh, and the aforementioned damaged wells when we have particle plugging, emulsions, mutability chains, fines migration and clays and a different approach to uh, remedy or to um, remove the damage uh, with the different um, uh, <coughs> methods and uh, operations. Sorry, can I ask you? Read that? Yes. Uh, my question is relating to previous slide. Uh, what is the benefit of decreasing bio coefficient and is it possible to change bio coefficient by using uh, stimulation? I mean, uh, chemical no. stimulation. No, did I say that we are trying to decrease the uh, bio? It's just a mathematical way and I was talking about only what we can uh, do with this parameter. So, uh, formation volume factor, I didn't mention that uh, matrix acidization is uh, related to that. So, it is not possible and there is no benefit. To change it or decrease it. Well, uh, from the mathematical point of view, yes, of course there is a benefit, but uh, how you can uh, the, uh, decrease it? It is kind of a property of the fluid. Yes, thank you. Okay. Okay, I got it. Here are again. <clears throat> Sorry, uh, different uh, approach. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, does this parameter depends on the uh, separator condition? For example, temperature and pressure of the uh, separators. And I mean the stage uh, in the process of uh, uh, flash vaporization or uh, differential liberation. As I know, okay, this uh, affects this parameter. If we are talking about formation volume factor, then it is not affected by separator because it is a uh, ratio between the uh, stock tank barrel and uh, reservoir barrels. And stock tank barrel is the uh, stock tank conditions. So uh, zero atmosphere uh, or one atmosphere absolute and uh, 60 degree Fahrenheit. Okay. So your separator conditions uh, will affect shrinkage of the oil at this particular field with these particular separator conditions. But total uh, formation volume factor is uh, calculated based on the standard con uh, sorry stock tank conditions which is the fear which is fixed uh, is that clear uh yes it's clear but uh as we change this uh temperature and we uh flash it or do we uh do some differential liberation this uh value of this uh, parameter uh uh, for these different pressures uh, are changing. That's why I'm asking that. <clears throat> when we talk about, uh, sorry, <clears throat> again, you are, uh, um, you have to realize that when we say BO in this case, this is for the um, stock tank, uh, stock tank conditions. So final uh, value of this. Uh, yes, it is changing depending on the uh, BO, but it's a sort of pressure and temperature. But when we talk, when we put this value into this formula, we use the uh, ratio that is uh, uh, reservoir barrels over the uh, stock tank barrels. Okay, the all are Changes are between these two states, two states, okay, between the reservoir pressure and the uh, um, <clears throat> surface pressure. Uh, 
uh, you mean uh, it is depends on the only initial condition and the final condition, not the past that uh, we do it. Okay, I got it. Well, it is a. Uh, I, I suppose you you have seen this curve uh, of uh, uh, bo against the pressure. Yes, have I have seen that. Yes. So this is the last point on the uh, curve, uh, which is the lowest point, and <coughs> at the sixty degree uh, Fahrenheit and zero. Uh, gauge pressure, zero uh, psi at gauge pressure, uh, or one psi, uh, sorry, uh, for 15 psi of uh, absolute pressure. At uh, so th this is the conditions. Uh, this value for this formula is used. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. This uh, the the change of the value is used when we consider the uh, <coughs> multiphase flow in the well bore to see how at which uh, uh, depths of the well uh, we will have how much gas we will have. Okay, you get the point. So as we go through from the surface uh, from the reservoir to the surface. In, uh, through the tubing, this uh, curve that you uh, have seen or you refer to, uh, BO against the pressure, is used to calculate uh, multiphase flow conditions uh, in, in, in the well bore. So, because as it goes up uh, uh, to the surface, the, the multiphase fluid goes up to the surface. The pressure change drastically at every uh, inch, uh, uh, foot, or meter, and the change of PO dictates how much gas is going to be released from this uh, fluid, and that allows us to calculate at each uh, depth the uh, <coughs> hold up. If you remember what is hold up, so hold up is the uh, liquid. Uh, area of the pipe uh, occupied by liquid over the uh, area of the pipe uh, cut off. Uh, I mean, the, uh, if you look at the uh, pipe, uh, the area pipe uh, cut area. So uh, over the uh, area that is occupied by gas. And that's very important to calculate friction losses. It's very important to calculate uh, multiphase flow uh, regimes uh, to identify the regimes and to uh, calculate the pressure losses through the tubing. But in this case, when we when we consider why actually this uh, parameter is here, because initially this formula was uh, derived for the uh, reservoir conditions. So how much fluid we are producing from the reservoir, but the fluid from the reservoir is not a financial uh, kind of uh, uh, parameter value. So therefore, this was used, this was uh, in the, uh, introduced into this uh, formula to convert it to the uh, stock tank barrels, which is the fixed conditions to, uh, to to realize how much uh, uh, sellable oil we have, okay? How much market oil we have? So this value is the last value or the, at the fixed stock tank barrels, uh, stock tank uh, conditions, uh, and stock tank conditions is fixed, are fixed, okay? Okay, thank you. Yeah, madam. Yes. Uh, can you please repeat what you have said about this um, radius ratio? Which radius ratio? No, in 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 the same on the same slide, R E over R W. I mean. Mm hmm. Yes. Yeah. Can you like um repeat okay. what you have said? Uh, 
Uh, here image. you can see, okay, I see. Uh, here you can see that RW is the, uh, <coughs> so as we decrease RW, uh, sorry, as we increase RW, the production rate should increase, right? Yes. Mahrajim, Mahrajim, then. Okay, so as we, uh, uh, so therefore we, our aim to increase uh, res, uh, the uh, effective well bore radius, and we will see how we achieve it. Actually, I talked about that during the perforating, uh, during the uh, talking about the perforating techniques like. Uh, uh, extreme overbalance or frack, uh, frack packing uh, and other other techniques when we increase the uh, connection of the well bore uh, with the uh, uh, reservoir and uh, by that we increase the effective or apparent uh, um, well bore radius. And uh, matrix stimulation is also uh, contributes to this increase. Uh, we will see it uh, later. Okay. Okay. Did you get answer to your question? Well, yes. You said like increasing RE will um, will contribute so to the increasing can, flow rate. How can increase RE? No, RE is uh, increasing RE will decrease the uh, production rate. And it is a kind of uh, purely mathematical effect. It's not a reservoir effect. Okay. But uh, decreasing RW will uh, increase the production rate. Mm, and okay. <clears throat> the, the increasing RW are different question that we will try to answer. Well, partially we uh, uh, we, we have seen the effect of some perforation techniques to increase RW uh, effective uh, reduce, and um, later we will see how the symmetric simulation is uh, affecting. It. Okay, so uh, and this uh, again uh, some uh, description of uh, mechanical methods, uh, chemical methods, biological, combined, thermal, and uh, what is the objective uh, to uh, how it it will affect the um, which parameter it will affect. Uh, here you can see uh, combined mechanical chemical methods for carbonate formation, acid fracking, including profit acid fracturing, closed fracture or warm hole. This will increase RW uh, substantially. Um, here, uh, for example, another example, uh, profit hydraulic fracturing when we fracture the well and reservoir and uh, increase uh, the uh, contact area with the reservoir, explosive fracturing under rimming and um, Additional perforating, increasing uh, the thickness, as I said. So <clears throat> these are the, and you have it on your, in your book, I hope, and uh, you can um, go through it and memorize it or try to understand. And if you have any questions, I will be happy to answer. Okay. And these are the global uh, guidelines to select a simulation treatment for clastic and carbonate reservoirs. What is clastic reservoirs? Tamkin, what is the clastic reservoirs? This is Tamkin here. Oh, I can see his name, but anybody. What is uh, clastic reservoirs? What are the clastic reservoirs? Um, like uh, composed of uh, fragments, clusters. Classic rock means is like. Oh. 
wurde gesagt. Does anybody know what is classic? Like, like sandstone. Like sandstone. Oh, it is sandstone. It's not like sandstone. It is a sandstone reservoir. Uh, <coughs> so, clastics means uh, sand or sandstone. Yes, every, everything is sedimentary. Carbon is also sedimentary. But, maybe uh, they're. Clastics. Maybe no, they're. It is sandstone. We all said that, but we all started from okay. with, uh, more general uh, terms. Clastic uh, reservoirs, clastic formations are the sandstones, uh, usually sandstones uh, with the uh, sequencing with the um, shales. So uh, it means it's a kind of uh, deposited or sedimented as a particles, okay, as opposed to carbonates that are created by mostly um, a high uh, pressure uh, over this. And uh, from these, uh, from the uh, carbonates, mostly are generated, diagenerated from the uh, organic materials. <coughs> okay, and this, this. Uh, Table is also uh, two tables uh, are also uh, present in your book, so you can go through. Uh, so there is a uh, classic reservoir propped hydraulic fracturing uh, for um, high skin, low skin, or for low permeabilities. Uh, frac and frac matrix uh, acidizing treatment uh, may be not required for the uh, high medium permeability uh, with low skin. Or uh, for carbonate as well, propped hydraulic fracture is mostly used, and uh, acid matrix uh, treatment is um, used to create some wormholes. We'll talk about that acid fracture, closed fracture, acid acidization, and acid viscous fingering. Uh, these are the um, four homogeneous formations. Okay. Okay, uh, <clears throat> so as we uh, talked through all the um, time uh, last semester, this semester as well, the most uh, vulnerable uh, or most affected area uh, or zone uh, within the uh, well drainage area is the near well bore zone because, as we said, uh, in the near well bore zone, we have a uh, reduced area to flow, and uh, the uh, from the from uh, on the other hand, this near well bore zone is uh, mostly um, affected by the formation damage because of these uh, drilling fluids, com uh, the uh, com completion fluids, workover fluids, and therefore uh, the uh, even with the uh, no damage case, as you can see, the uh, loss of the pressure loss through this near well bore zone is uh, much uh, higher than through all the reservoir. Again, because as we as we uh, approach the well bore, the area uh, of the flow area for the flow pass is decreasing. Uh, substantially, drastically, and that is creating uh, friction losses, uh, uh, friction losses uh, on the uh, flow path, and therefore we get um, a drastical change in the pressure. But if there is a uh, any damage, then this pr pressure loss might be uh, even killing the well, so no production or uh, production will be uh, affected by uh, times, okay? Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, to remedy this, we have to uh, treat the near well bore uh, 
uh, to restore the natural uh, raw production capacity in ideal case. Um, again, uh, mentioning the uh, Hawkins formula that we um, talked about uh, in uh, previous chapter. Again, uh, just reminding you that uh, from the uh, previous chapter, you, you have seen um, different uh, exposition of these charts when we have a uh, different um, damage radius and uh, effect of this, uh, the, the um, percentage on uh, undamaged permeability and the in, in uh, percentage and the uh, percentage of uh, undamaged. Uh, so this is the productivity increase or decrease. OK, so as, as you can see, the uh, near well bore if we uh, have a uh, uh, three feet damaged zone, then we have uh, most damage on the uh, uh, most downgrading of the um, production production rate or productivity. Okay, and uh, if we decrease. Uh, if we uh, increase for the same amount, for example, here we have 80% damage for the uh, to the <coughs> reservoir. But if we increase the permeability by 80%, then the effect of this will be much less than effect of uh, damage. So, again, therefore, it's better to prevent the damage rather than uh, remedy the damage. Uh, another uh, issue is the um, effect of damage color. Uh, it happens when we do a, um, a matrix acidization and uh, so uh, initially, the um, damage is around uh, the uh, well bore, and then when we uh, the, do this matrix acidization, then uh, there might be some damage color left over in the reservoir, and this damage, the distance to this damage color, and the uh, kind of a um, width of the uh, damage color is also essential. So here you can see uh, different cases of color thickness, this color th this distance, and how it affects the um, productivity. So you can see the more the thickness, the more the uh, effect. Uh, and the um, and it depends on the um, distance from the well bore. So the, the the closer the this color, the highest effect, and after some distance, this effect is leveling down uh, and uh, change is very minimal. Uh, and the uh, very near well bore zone is very important. So if, uh, for example, at, uh, if we don't move this uh, color then uh, the damage, then it is a uh, almost 45% uh, only uh, of the original uh, productivity. If we uh, move it to the um, four feet, uh, like a meter away from the well bore, so we have damaged zone here and we have clean zone here relatively, then the damage might be 20%. Okay. And for different uh, color thickness, uh, the color thickness is also is important because, again, uh, the uh, thickness of this color, uh, it is a damaged zone, and thickness of damaged zone is uh, will be affecting the um, productivity. Okay. <clears throat> yes. Uh, can you say that the damaged color uh, is just 
another name for uh, them is near pole, um, nearby well pole. Mm. Um, damage color is uh, well. It is not nearby well bore, near, nearby well bore. It is a as I said, when we uh, the damage actually cannot be like this color. Uh, uh, how you can damage this well, uh, this well like this from the uh, beginning? So the uh, actually damaged zone is the zone around the well bore, near well bore. But when we do matrix acidization, we inject chemicals, and these chemicals are pushing some damage uh, further into the uh, uh, reservoir because we are injecting this uh, fluid under pressure. Okay, and uh, sometimes the uh, the volume that we inject is not enough to cover all this damage radius and we only clean this area, this radius and also pushing some damage or uh, part of the, uh, damage to, to the fluid that is damaging the uh, formation uh, further uh, from the um, well bore. Okay, and that is the case when this damage color is created. Damage color is not created uh, initially. Okay, it's not possible uh, having this color with the clean area around the well bore. Is if you mean that the other well, is that what you mean? No, actually, I confused damage color with uh, nearby nearby well bore uh, damage. It was misunderstood. So you mean another well? Different wells damage. That's what yeah. you mean? Just damage uh, near to well bore for a specific well. So again, uh, as I said, initially the, the, there is no possibility to have this damage color from the beginning because we can't have clean zone around the world board and then damage its uh, color. So it is yes, a no, result of... Okay, thanks. Thanks very much. <clears throat> so there is a uh, generally three categories of acid treatment. And these acid treatment, uh, treatments are acid washing, matrix acidizing and fracture acidizing. In this course, we will uh, talk about mostly uh, matrix acidizing when we uh, uh, inject a uh, chemical compositions uh, at matrix pressures or at pressures of the formation. Of, the, of course, uh, exceeding formation uh, pressure uh, and below the uh, fracturing pressure to dissolve or, or remove the damage or bypass the damage. Okay, and uh, acid washing is the we will talk about that uh, to mention it uh, when we uh, um, pour some acid into the well bore uh, below the uh, reservoir pressure and it is a um, aimed to clean perforations and uh, tubings and the other well bore uh, par parts uh, from the uh, different uh, damages like a uh, um, wax or uh, scaling uh, uh, or debris uh, so uh, it is not uh, injection, it's just the pouring the uh, acid into the um, well bore. Yes, Ahmed. So I have a question about the color sickness graphs, their graphs. Yes, go ahead. Uh, can you return the, this graph? Is, is it possible? I will try. This one, this one. I screen stopped 
I didn't see. I I am in the asset treatment. Maybe it didn't okay. change. No, I did change. Can can the others see the change? Now in the impact of the location of the zone near the billboard. Uh, there is also one uh, graphs. Three gra uh, three curves, one graph about the color sickness. I think after this okay. graph. Which graph you are seeing now? Uh, uh, I am seeing uh, 10. Now 10. Uh, the page 10. OK, uh, it's not the, the one that you want. Uh, yes, it's not uh, one I want. 11, the page 11. Can you return okay. the page 11? OK, I'm on the page 11. Uh, yes. The, in the color sickness, uh, what's the here yeah, color sickness? I didn't understand. Can you see the mouse? Not yet. Can you see the graph? Yes, I can see graph. On the right hand side, there is a uh, graph of the damage color, the blue yes. uh, donut. You can see this? Yes. So color sickness is shown here. So this is the color thickness. So uh, the um, mathematically color thickness is the inner radius radius from the well bore. Uh, uh, sorry, the outer radius of the damage color minus uh, inner ra radius of the color. So this is the damage uh, color thickness. So the thickness of the damaged zone around the uh, well bore. Can you see this? Yes, I can see. Okay. I understand. Yes, I understand. Uh, and the uh, fracture acidizing is a uh, acid treatment uh, combined with the uh, fracturing when we inject the acid at the uh, uh, pressures exceeding the formation for fracturing pressure. Uh, so it's a uh, having even more effect on the uh, uh, increasing the uh, effective uh, well bore radius. However, uh, we don't need always this. We uh, may uh, only uh, we may get results uh, with uh, just a uh, matrix acidizing. Uh, so it uh, it will depend on the uh, uh, lithology. It will depend on the formation damage severity and uh, damage uh, depths. Okay. So uh, for different uh, formations or lithologies. Uh, matrix acidizing has a different uh, objectives. Okay, uh, for the sandstones or the clastic uh, reservoirs, we uh, the matrix acidization is uh, aimed to remove the damage and uh, in uh, the um, Dissolve the uh, plugging the uh, in the per perforations and the formation pore network near the well bore. As we inject the uh, acid, it goes through these uh, um, um, solids that were uh, in in uh, infl infiltrated by the uh, completion or mud uh, fluids and. Um, it is this uh, dissolving uh, those particles and remo removing the damage. So the main aim is the uh, dissolve or remove the uh, uh, chemical uh, precipitations or uh, uh, solid particles that are solvable and uh, uh, 
uh, or uh, plugging the perforations and the soul plugging the perforations again uh, uh, through the chemical uh, effect, chemical reactions. And uh, only in this case, the sandstone acidizing will have an effect. And the acids commonly used here are hydrofluoric, uh, hydrochloric, uh, acetic, and formic. So mostly used is uh, hydrofluoric uh, with the combina with in, in combination with hydrochloric. Hydrochloric is always uh, should be used, and uh, so the aim here is theoretically acid flows through the pore system, dissolving solids and fines entrained in pore roads and pore spaces that in, that. Uh, stops or reduce oil or gas flow and as acid flows through the pore channels pore throats it's presumably should be able to dissolve small fines and particles present in pore space pore throats and along the uh, pore walls okay so uh, if for in sandstone uh, or clastic reservoir uh, matrix acidizing, the aim is to remove those these damage by the dissolving those particles, uh, chemical precipitations, results of chemical precipitations, or fines that migrated uh, or entrained by the. Um, in, uh, um, mud fluid or composition fluid. Is that clear? Yes. Okay. In the carbonate formation, the uh, aim is a little bit different because uh, carbonate formations are <coughs> uh, consist of cal calcium carbonate and it is uh, very um, uh, reactive with the uh, HCl and acetic and uh, formic um, acids. And uh, as it gets contact with uh, HCl, then it will uh, dissolve the uh, cementing material the, uh, and it will create this kind of wormholes. This is the uh, uh, side view and this is the uh, top view on the same well. So you can see that this is well bore. Can you see the mouse? So if this is the well bore, these are the uh, uh, wormholes created by the acid in the um, sans, uh, sorry, uh, carbonates. Okay, so this is the uh, two main uh, approach or objectives for sandstones and carbonates. The difference. So in uh, sandstones, we are trying to remove the damage. In uh, sandstones, we are trying to uh, penetrate or go further the world bore and uh, bypass the damage rather than uh, the uh, removing it. And by as as we have these wormholes, you can see how these effective world bore radius is increased. Okay, because now. Fluid is inflowing into the well bore through this uh, network of the wormholes. Okay. Do you understand what's wormhole? Wormholes are these uh, small channels or uh, it's not fractures. It is uh, exactly hole, uh, hole, holes or the channels that are created by the um, uh, acid in the carbonates. 
Okay. Yes. So, uh, as we said, it is important for the uh, success, uh, chance of success. It is very important to select uh, to uh, correct well and <coughs> select uh, the most appropriate optimum treatment uh, fluid and uh, the um, detailed design of the operational aspects of the treatment to achieve uh, required economic criteria, which is, of course, increase of the production rate, uh, uh, in, uh, in which case the incremental rate must cover the, uh, the rate that we will have additionally on top of the previous rate, will we'll cover the cost of the operations, including the uh, cost of the materials, cost of the chemicals, cost of the operation, operations, and uh, the other, uh, for example, just the salary of the people who involved into these operations. So, therefore, identifying a candidate well is the first task, because if you pick the wrong well, you will get wrong, uh, um, ineffective results or you will get uh, um, low uh, economics, uh, economic results. Uh, of course, uh, the net income from, as I said, additional hydrocarbons produced should, co should cover the cost. Uh, so, therefore, we have to first uh, identify the uh, well economics. We'll talk about that in our next uh, lecture. Okay, it's time uh, now. Uh, any questions? Can I ask a question? Yes. Uh, in previous slide, you mentioned that uh, in, in carbonate reservoirs, by using chemical uh, treatment, let's say, main objective is creation of wormholes. If, yes. uh, if you are trying to create wormholes, uh, shall we call it again chemical treatment or it looks like jetting because we are creating wormholes? Jetting? Yes. Why why is jetting? Where you can see jetting? Jetting is done at very high pressures. It's not if jetting. We, it's uh, so chemically we create wormholes, right? Yes, matrix acidizing is acid chemical creation. So this, uh, you know, what's wormhole? Yes, it's just kind of. Uh, conductive channel, let's see. No, oh. uh, in, 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 in a very simple word, in general, do you know what's warm? So warm is uh, um, good, okay. Uh, yeah. Onlar yer torpağdan şey, qurt çıxardır. E? Bax, o qurtlar torpağda yer eləyir özü üçün yer eləyir. Wormhole odur. And the, uh, the aim of this term here is that these wormholes are created under a pressure that is lower than fracture pressure. And uh, the, these wormholes are created only by the chemical effect not by the uh, injection effect, okay? Uh, so the aim is as the as we inject the, pre, uh, the acid at uh, below the fracture pressure, we, we just uh, aim uh, that this acid will make its own way, uh, its own path through the uh, formation. Again, because uh, the uh, hydrochloric, uh, the, the car carbonates, calcium carbonate, uh, is very uh, reactive to the uh, any acid. Hang yandır mısınız? Hang daşın üstüne flor teşmüsüz fışıldayır nize? Eridron. Okay. 
So it is, therefore it's called wormhole because it is not effect of in, uh, injection pressure, it's effect of uh, uh, the chemi uh, sorry, chemical composition or acid making its pass uh, through the uh, reservoir, through the farm, through the near well bore zone of the reservoir. Okay, it's not jetting. Jetting is uh, concentrated flow, high pressure flow of some solids, uh, like uh, it might be uh, sand, may, might be um, water, but uh, it should be high pressure and very. Um, narrow um, uh, kind of uh, injection, okay? Uh, this is not uh, jetting, this is warm holding. Can we say that it kind of solves the part of formation rock? Not kinds of, exactly, dissolving the part of formation rock. Yeah, so that the same principle as the sandstone, as the sandstone no. formation and rising? No, no. In sandstone acidizing, we do not acidize the matrix. We acidize the particles that are creating damage, like these fines migrated or fines that are solids particles that were entrained uh, by the uh, mud fluid or um, compilation fluids. So we are acidizing and trying to dissolve the damage itself. In uh, and therefore we said in a previous chapter that when we design the fluid, uh, the mud fluid, we have to make sure that these solids that we in, uh, um, uh, put uh, we uh, the solids particles that are uh, in the uh, mud fluid or the mud itself should be dissolvable by the acids. So we can uh, clean it uh, after the drilling uh, by the acidization. In this case, we dissolve the matrix, uh, the rock itself. Is that clear? Therefore, we say here we are trying to bypass the damage. Okay, we are creating this wormhole network, which bypassing the damage, and we uh, increasing the uh, uh, effective uh, wormhole radius, effective inflow radius. Clear? Yes. Sure. I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you still have a question, if there is any uh, unclarity, please ask. No, that was what I meant, actually, yeah. OK. Orhan, you happy? Everything is clear. Thanks. OK. OK. Uh, thanks for your attention. If there is no questions, uh, have a good time and uh, for the FTP uh, session, is there any need for FTP session at three? I'm asking uh, gro my uh, the, uh, groups. Um, not for our group, no need um, for the session actually. Okay, I thought Khan. Um, Khan Malim, I will just would like to ask 10, 15 minutes of yours to discuss one thing. Okay. Fine. Yeah. Personally, me, I don't. I don't think that the rest of the group will be joining. Is that about FTP? Yes. Yes. Okay. No problem. We'll do that. Okay. Okay. Uh, thanks very much. See you next week. Uh, next week, uh, maybe at the. Uh, mm -hmm. Tutorials, you uh, one of the tutorials you uh, may have a quizzes that will be again uh, um, part of your final uh, grading for this course. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
I am preparing the questions for the quizzes and for the kind of uh, midterm. It's not a uh, exam, uh, but it will be quiz during the um, tutorials. So no pressure, but uh, just want some ideas how we are getting on the course. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Sağ olun, Hamen. Sağ olun, sağ olun. 